Hello everyone, I will now illustrate Cisco NSO from a network engineer perspective. As a network engineer, you need to automate the network. And the challenge is, of course, a large network, a lot of devices from different vendors, and your daily task is moving around with different CLI flavors, scripting towards various devices, storing that data somewhere, and pretty soon the data gets dirty, out of sync with the network, and all the tasks are making sure the config is correct all over the network. So with NSO in place, the main thing is that you get a network represented in a logically centralized database. So CDB, the config data store within NSO, will have all the configurations from all the devices from the network represented in the data store. And in contrast to most other automation tools, convict tools out there, CDB stores the configuration as semantic data in the data store. Not just the text blobs that you got from the devices. That means that as a network engineer, you can manipulate the config. Once you've done your job, you commit, and that configuration is transformed into the corresponding configs on the devices. NSO supports network element drivers for the networks. Network elements you have. That gives you the device abstraction so you can forget about various CLIs, various protocols, various MIBs whatsoever that is abstracted away. CDB has the config and the device manager which I pretty soon will illustrate, gives you functions to manage your devices, like device groups, device templates, compliance reporting, etc. So with that in place, you can manage consistent configuration across the network. Whatever you're configuring, NSO, and commit will be sent to the network as a transaction, meaning there is no stale configs. If you change the setting for seven devices, either all seven change or none of them, nothing stops in between. There are synchronization mechanisms both ways, so you can incorporate out-of-band changes back to CDB, or you can use CDB to push configs out to network, and you can inspect diffs. So before committing, you can see the diffs, what will be the change. You can also diff the config in CDB with whatever config is out there. So with that, you can do a lot of network automation tasks. First of all, you get a network-wide CLI, so it doesn't matter if you have Huawei, Ericsson, Alcatel, Lucent, Juniper, or Cisco in the network with all the different flavors. When you sit north of NSO, you have a CLI towards CDB, and that's in one single flavor. You can pick a Juniper style or Cisco XR style. That's the CLI you use towards the system all over the network. So you can use that as a power tool using the CLI directly. Of course, you can script to it. So rather script it to individual devices, you script to one CLI towards the whole network. And you can, for example, use the REST API out of NSO if you want to write some other scripts or some more portals up here north of NSO. We'll soon show you the various tasks you can do. Of course, you can do things like golden configs, templates. You can do compliance reporting. So with that as an introduction, let's move over to demonstration. So let's see how to use NSO to deal with devices in the network. And NSO is config-centric. So in NSO, you have the config of the network, a perfect image of what's out there. So that means, of course, you need to bootstrap the system. So the first thing you would do is tell NSO, okay, grab all the config that's out there, interpret it, and store into the CDB data store. So what I'm showing you now is that I'm reaching out to the devices in the network, grabbing the config, interpreting it before storing it in CDB. So at this point, the config is now within CDB, so from this moment on, you can view it, you can modify it, and commit it to the network. So this is the NSO web UI. Let's for a while move over to the NSO CLI to view the config a little bit. We will pretty soon move back to the web UI to do the same thing. So as I said, this CLI touches NSO CDB and not the devices directly. Since we have all the device config here, we can view it. For example, viewing the config of the device CE1, or you can use tab completion here, so whatever you have down there on the device is also supported up here in NSO. So let's say you would like to see the IP config. This is the IP config of CE1, or the interface config. Since this is network-wide, we can use ranges. 
So let's say you would like to see the IP config of CE123. So that's the IP config across those three devices. Of course, you can do the same thing in the web UI here. So you can go into CE1 and we can use tabs to navigate. There is also a navigation bar up here. So we can go into the config piece of CE1 and maybe we're interested in the SNMP server settings here. So here you see the SNMP server settings of the same device. Let's imagine you would like to modify something here. So you can start in the web UI here and you can add a community. And let's give that read only view. Committing that is now adding a community string read only to CE0. So let's look at how to use NSO to do some config changes over the CLI. I will change the community string onto different devices. So first I'm changing on PE0, adding the public community string here. And let's change it on PE2 as well. So this is a Juniper device and NSO still gives me the tab completion here for that device. So we're adding a public to that one as well. You can check the outstanding changes. These are the two changes. And if I would like to see, whenever I commit this, what will be sent to the individual devices? We have one XR device and one Juniper device. So if I do a commit dry run out format native, this will show me what will be sent south. And in this specific demo, we're talking XR CLI to the XR device and towards the Juniper, we're talking netconf which you're going to see here. So this is the XR CLI generation, and this is the netconf output to the Juniper. And we can commit this at this point. The changes are now performed in the network. You can also use ranges to change the configuration across a set of devices. So assume you have a good naming scheme in place. You can change the community string settings across CE0 up to CE4 in one go, like this. So at this point, check the outstanding changes to see that these changes will be applied to the network. And we can commit that one. NSO carefully uses transactions whenever changes are sent to network. So the configuration changes scenarios I did show recently is an all or nothing. So either this community string was added to all devices that were part of that commit or not. So NSO does roll back on a failure automatically for you. But you can also do manual rollbacks. So for every transaction you send, NSO stores a rollback file. And here you can see the rollback file for the last change we did. How to undo it? Because here we did change on PE0 and PE2. It will delete that community string in those two and go back to the previous range thing we did across the CEs. Here we see the undo. So as a network engineer, if you realized afterwards this was not a good move, you can load that rollback file and you can add rollback files cumulative, meaning adding up all the changes to that point or just that specific one. So loading that one, and we can also load that one. So now I have loaded the undo of all those changes on PEs and CEs, and we can see what NSO will do here. We can see that NSO will delete that community string across all those devices and committing that, meaning we're back to square zero where we started. So what I've shown so far is how to view config across devices in the network, manipulate config, view the native commands before we commit them, 
how to roll back changes that you would like to undo. And this is sort of the normal operation mode of NSO. And since the network element drivers are rich, you can use the NSO CLI to do whatever tasks you need. But of course, things will happen out of bound. There are occasions where engineers log in directly to the devices, do modifications, and there's a mechanism in NSO to detect that. So let's see, are we in sync with the network? NSO will do a quick diff, not sort of doing the full config diff. That will be too slow in a large network. So it uses clever mechanisms to detect if a device is out of sync. That can be based on transaction IDs, hash sums, or anything like that, or timestamps. Here, NSO is telling me that CE0 has another config than NSO has. And you can, from this output where it's shown, these guys were in sync, this one is out of sync, you can continue your workflow here. So in what way are we out of sync here? You can do a compare config, and it shows you in green for new stuff, red for deleted stuff. And here we see that on the device there is a community string private for read-write. So this is the NSO piece, and this is what's out there on the device. At this point, NSO doesn't have a strong opinion who's right, who's wrong. That's you as a network engineer that can decide upon that. Okay, you can inspect as you see, and you can take the decision who's the master. Is NSO the master? That will then say sync to overwrite that device, or that might have been the correct change. Then you can sync that device back to NSO. Note well how you can sort of continue in the same workflow to do sync from directly. So assume that piece of config was correct on the device. Sync that back to NSO. Okay, we're back in shape. Now we're in sync again. Those kind of sync checks can be scheduled or executed manually. At any point in time, NSO detects that a device is out of sync. It also generates an alarm that you can see here. That alarm can be forwarded to a trouble ticket system or an automated process that would imply any policy. So if you have the policy that NSO is the master, that alarm could trigger an automatic sync to or vice versa. So you close the loop there with whatever policy you have. Now it's time to have a look at templates. You can define templates in NSO that goes across device types and devices in your network. Templates are config, and within the config, you can define variables. So going back to your simple community string example again, what I'm showing you here is one example template called SNMP1 with a piece of config, and the config can be with hard-coded values, or you can use a string variables here. So dollar community means it takes the community string as an input, and the template deals with different data models across different device types. So for XR and for Juniper and iOS, but note well, when you define a template, you just work in the NSO CLI, and you tab complete, and you don't have to deal with the underlying protocols or CLI for the devices. It's all done toward the NSO data store, so you can forget about all the nitty gritty details of the native CLIs of the devices. So whenever you apply this template, it will prompt you for that community string and be applied to a single device, a range of devices, or a group of devices. And we can move over to the web UI to illustrate this. We could have done it here in CLI as well, but let's move over to NSO CLI and have a look at device groups. So here I have groups of devices, and when you verify device groups, you can have any number of device groups. They can be hierarchical, a device can be parts of several groups. There's full flexibility here. Assume we would like to assign a common community strings across all our PE routers. You can pick that group, and you can say apply template. And NSO will prompt you for available templates and prompt you for the variables that are available in there. And you give the values of those variables. 
NSO will now validate this template across the different device types to make sure that the template will work across those devices. And looks good here. We can dry run it. We can see that we will add that community string across these devices and that device group, and of course, end up with committing it. Another important task for network engineers is to be able to enforce policies in the network. So policies are configuration rules that everyone must adhere to. NSO helps you in defining policies, meaning that a policy defines what is a good configuration. And whoever tries to do a config change that violates that policy will be blocked or warned. You can have an error policy, it's impossible to bypass it. And you can have another warning policy that only warns you're violating a policy. Are you sure you want to proceed? We can have a look at a policy here. We have a policy rule called GB10. A little bit silly example, but it's a hello world demonstration here. So policies in NSO have, first of all, an iterator for each. So for which devices in the network should this be true? And you can do expressions here in this case. I'm doing a fairly simple one. I'm saying all the devices that start with CE. So pick the devices you want to check, or you can iterate over interfaces within the devices, etc. But here I'm iterating over every CE device in the network must adhere to an expression. So for each of the guys that I get from the for each, this expression will be validated. And here I'm checking that it must be a gigabit ethernet named zero slash one. So check all these, match this expression. If it's false, I'm entering the warning stage. So this is a warning policy. It's possible to bypass it. If I make it an error, it's impossible to bypass it. So that can be, you can have any number of policies. They will be validated at every commit. So these are system and network wide. People might not even know all of them. If they try to do a config change that is a policy violation, they will be prompted with a message and blocked from doing that non-desired config. So let's try this one. So one thing that I'm showing here that I haven't shown really previously is the tab completion features of NSO. So when you tab complete here across the network, of course you get tab completion for what's available in the models across the devices. But it's very important that CDB has the config as well. You get all the available interfaces. So in this case, I'm doing tab completion for CE0, that specific device, it's gigabit interfaces, and it prompts me for available interfaces. But in this case, I'm trying to delete 0 slash 1 here. Of course, you can realize that this will validate the policy we have up here. So if I commit this one, it says CE0 should have 0 slash 1 interface. Proceed, yes or no. So it was a warning, therefore I have the option of proceeding. If it would have been an error, it would have been impossible. So in this case, I say, oh, sorry. Then of course you don't proceed, and you revert the outstanding conflict changes. So that was policies, making sure that no one can do undesired changes in the network. Another typical task that is important in certain enterprises and organizations is compliance reporting, which need to prove that the configuration is okay, show a bit of history, what has happened to the network, and within NSO we can define various reports. So you can define different reports that will check different things. I've just prepared one called Compliance Audit, and the configuration of reports can have different options. You can check all the devices, or you can check a device group. You can make one report for your core network, another report for the access network. You can use the device group mechanism there, and you can also check the services. I haven't really talked about services so far in this video, but as you might know, NSO can handle also services on top of the devices. 
So the compliance report can check, for example, that all your VPNs are okay, that they are configured according to what you promised your customers. So let's run the report here. This report will check all the devices, the device groups, check all services. It will check if the devices are in sync with the NSO. It will compare the configuration according to predefined templates that you can feed into the report. And the output, you give the name, and then you pick the range. So a report goes back in history to show what are the configuration changes that have happened in the network. So if you pick a week here, it will show you the config changes in your network the last week. I just go one day back and you can generate different output formats. Let's generate HTML. Run the report and in a while we'll have the output which I will quickly show for you here. There. So in this simple demo setup, I have 17 devices and no services provisioned. So this will be the contents of the report. And here we'll check the report, and it gives you a lot of interesting things. So over these 24 hours, there were a couple of out-of-sync events, meaning there have been occasions where NSO and network has had a change, meaning out-of-bounds config has happened. Someone has logged into the device, done a config change, and went home. It also shows you any config discrepancies. Part of the report definition was templates that you could define, saying these are the golden configs. Check if these golden configs are okay in the network. They are not. It also shows you which are the commits that have happened over the last 24 hours. This is sort of the overall table. And then you can drill down to see for each device all the config changes down to every piece of config. So here we see a bit of the history where I played with the community settings. This report shows you the community string has been changed over these last 24 hours. So you can schedule these reports in Crontab, so execute them every day or every week, and have different reports to check different things and then distribute that to the correct people. So what I've shown you right now is from one single point, namely NSO, you can reach the whole network from one unified CLI. You have one configuration data store representing the whole network. You have features like doing multi-device configurations, doing golden configs with templates, doing compliance reporting, all of that using CLI or the web UI. But let's say you want to automate all of this. So of course, at this point you understand, and rather than scripting towards various individual CLIs, you can do CLI scripting, but towards NSO. So that gives you much higher level of abstraction you won't have to deal with various flavors. You have the config in one data store. NSO will deal with the transactions. You don't have to write error handling code. So CLI scripting towards NSO CLI on that level instead. Just to give you a glimpse of another option, maybe you would like to do a simple portal to do some pieces of this. So NSO has a rich library of northbound API. So you can do Python, etc. Let's say you would like to do a web app talking REST to NSO. So everything I did show you in the web UI and in the CLI is available over northbound REST as well. So just to give you a flavor of that, let's say you would like to get the config of the device CE1. So just think of the path you're using in the CLI. You're checking the devices, the device CE1. So you just build the URLs like you would the tab completion in the CLI and you send that URL to the NSO, and you get the config back. You can get it in XML or in JSON. Remember now that this is north of NSO. So again, no understanding of the devices as such, no understanding of those flavors. This REST is generated from NSO north. So it's very easy to wrap together a simple web app that changes pieces of config, modifies pieces of config, applies configs in whatever web portal framework you would like to automate from. That was the end of the story. Thank you.